People of the Internet's Retro Raconteur here, and today I'm going to show you exactly how to get Harry Potter Magic Awakened up and running on your PC, even if you live in an area that doesn't have the official PC client, which if you guys didn't know, yes, the game is coming to PC in all territories eventually, but we just don't know when. It's only available in certain areas right now. You can actually download it right now in the U.S. I tried it the other day. Uh, you can download the official PC client. However, if you try to go to your uh, region or server, rather, it's going to be locked. So right now, just to show you guys, this is not using the official PC client. You can see here, North America, uh, and I am on the Opali server. Now, the way that we're doing this is that we are running an Android emulator. And I don't want you guys to think that this is like something shady or it, it doesn't break terms of service. It's nothing like that. Essentially, what you're going to be doing is enabling your Windows PC to run other operating systems and in this case you get to run Android so it's not like you're downloading a bunch of free games or anything even though this game is free to play but if you ever wanted to play any other Android games you can buy them just like you normally would through the Google Play Store using an emulator so virtualization is just essentially what tells your computer, hey, we want to run another operating system. A lot of people use this to run Linux, and in our case, we're gonna be using it to run Android. So the reason that you have to go through and change a lot of these settings is because Windows just doesn't enable it by default because not a lot of people use this feature. So if you wanna make sure that your system supports virtualization, you can follow these steps right here. And again, I'm gonna link all of this down in the description below. So all these links that I'm using, this is actually directly on Bluestacks' help center right here. Now, when it comes to enabling virtualization on your system, you're gonna have to enable it in two places, Windows settings and also your BIOS settings. How to enable Bluestacks on Windows 11, that is what I use. If you're on Windows 10, it's gonna work very similar. There are just some slight differences in the way the UI looks. So your first step is to open the Windows settings. You can do this by going down to the Start menu, and then you're just gonna type Windows settings, as you can see they'll do here, or you can click on the gear, that works too. Then Windows Update, bottom left over there, and then you're gonna be looking for the Advanced, advanced options right there. You go ahead and click on that. Then it's gonna take you to the next screen here and you scroll down until you find recovery. Reset, advanced startup, go back. You just click on this little section right here. And that'll take you to this menu where you can see advanced startup and you're gonna hit restart now. Once you restart, you're gonna see a different menu. So it's not gonna boot into Windows normally. You're gonna see this option here and you wanna click on the troubleshoot one. From there, you just click on advanced options right here. You're gonna click right here, UEFI firmware settings. Stay with me, trust me. I promise you, the first part is by far the most difficult part. Once you get through this, it's smooth sailing. So then you'll go ahead, restart your machine and it's gonna enter your system BIOS. Now, if you've never looked at this screen before, it can be a little bit daunting at first. And it's gonna look different based on the manufacturer of your motherboard and whether you have an AMD or Intel CPU. So because there are so many different manufacturers, your BIOS is probably going to look different than what they show in this video right here. So what I recommend is that you go to Google, type in your motherboard. So I have an MSI B550M. I'm gonna say motherboard, enable virtualization. There it is right there. And I mean, look, it took me straight to a YouTube video. That is what my BIOS looks like, so I bet that would work. However, if you scroll down a little bit, you can usually find, yep, right there. So we have the actual MSI page. So this is actually what mine looked like right here. I had to go into overclock, then advanced CPU configuration, and it was under the one here called SVM mode. I had to enable that to get it to work properly. So if you have an Intel CPU, then these are the settings that you're gonna look to enable. If you're on AMD, which is what I had, then these are the settings that you're gonna look for. And don't forget, make sure you save the BIOS settings and restart. Now, you just need to turn on the virtual machine platform for your Windows settings. So you'll go to start here, then we search for Windows features, and you'll have one that pops up called turn Windows features on or off. So you can see here in step two, they say in the Windows features, find virtual machine platform and select it. So mine will already be enabled right here. I checked it earlier. And then to get mine to work, there were two additional ones that I had to enable. It was Windows hypervisor platform and also the Windows subsystem for Linux. I went ahead and checked both of those as well. So this is the app that I've been using. It's called Bluestacks. There was just a big update the other day because I know on launch day, a lot of the emulators were not working correctly. So there was a big update to at least Bluestacks. I don't know about the others, but Bluestacks had an update and then the game itself had an update as well. So this has been running great for me. I played a lot yesterday exclusively right here 
on the PC through this emulator. And just for full disclosure here, guys, I am a BlueStacks affiliate, so if you use this link right here, I'll also put it in the description as well. That's really gonna go to help out the channel, and I appreciate it a lot. I think BlueStacks works great. I've tried several others even before they approached me about this affiliate partnership and could never get them to work properly. This is the first one that I've gotten to work and work consistently. Now, that being said, there are plenty of other emulators out there. So if you don't want to use BlueStacks, you don't have to. They've been kind enough to sponsor this video, so that's why I'm going to be using that for today. And for the foreseeable future, this is what I'm going to be playing on. So now that you've reached this point, you are ready to finally download BlueStacks. You can do BlueStacks 10 or you can do BlueStacks 5. Both of these will work just fine. I'll link this article in the description. It does a great job of explaining the differences between BlueStacks 5 and BlueStacks 10. Basically, BlueStacks 10 has a lot more cloud features, so you don't actually have to save a lot of these games to your system. So then you'll go through the steps of installing the software. In our case, this is BlueStacks. Just install now, let it do its thing. You might have to restart a couple of times. And then you will have to set it up with your Google account. So given that you're going to be running Android, you will need a way to sign into the Google Play Store and download these games. Now, once you finally have BlueStacks installed on your machine, it's gonna be very important that when you launch it, you right click and you choose to run as administrator. I kid you not, you guys, I went through all those steps, had to do a lot of troubleshooting because I didn't enable virtualization properly, and then it still wasn't working, and I finally found a solution that says to make sure that you're running as administrator, and that is what finally made everything start working so beautifully. And then once you're in, this is what the interface looks like. So you can just go to search right here at the top, and I'm going to say Harry Potter Magic Awakened. I already have it installed, so I'm not sure what it'll look like here. Yep, and there it is right there. You can also try Hogwarts Mystery or Puzzles and Spells. Both of those work too. So I hit View Details on it, and I already have mine downloaded and installed, so that's why mine says Play on App Player here. But yours will probably say Download. And so you can see here, I am, you know, moving my mouse. I can go ahead and click. It responds to the click when I hit Enter Hogwarts here going to take a second to load in. All right, and here we are logging in for the fourth straight day, getting our two keys. Make sure you guys do that each day when you go in, you get a little sign-in bonus. But yeah, just to show you once you're in, I am now using W, A, S, and D to move my character around. If I want to spin the camera around, I kind of have to click and drag, and it actually works surprisingly well. For a mobile game, Everything looks great. I will say the little dancing mini game is way more difficult when you're trying to use a mouse as opposed to just using a touch screen. So yeah, good luck with that. Another feature that I love is you can actually go back and forth between your phone and playing on PC. So my phone is Apple, it is not Android. So because I've linked it to my WB account, I think that's why everything just carries over. So all my progress, I was actually playing last night in bed for a little bit and I was using my phone to do so. Now within BlueStacks, you might be annoyed at first and say, oh man, look at all these ads over here. But if you look over here on the right, there are all of these additional controls, all of these settings. For example, that's where I can change the volume right here. So we have it muted right now. Let me go ahead and turn it back on. But then this is the one that I've been using a lot right here. It's this little toggle full screen. And when I hit that, everything else goes away. All the menus, all the ads. Again, BlueStacks is a free program, so that's why the ads are there. And then you are in the game, ready to go, ready to play. Even have your little mouse cursor, which kind of changes over a little bit to match the aesthetic of the game. Now, there are some additional on-screen controls. Like over here, you see W, A, S, and D. And then you have C right here to type. You have Q and then E for the knapsack. Space will pull up your charms like that. You see, I just hit space bar. I personally don't like having that on, kind of cluttering up the UI. So if you click on this little icon right here that's a keyboard, game controls, you can turn off the on-screen controls. And then you're not going to have that cluttering up there at the bottom. So then just going to look like this right here. Now, if you're on a Mac, it is my hope that at some point this game will actually be able to run on M1 and M2 Macs without anything additional at all. That's actually a really big feature that Apple talked a lot about when they first started making their own chips for their laptops again, is the fact that they can actually run iPhone and iPad apps straight on the Mac. And I actually thought this was an automatic thing. I thought it would just work, but apparently the developers have to say that they're okay with that. They want to enable that feature. So hopefully we'll see that at some point with Magic Awaken. Right now, though, you cannot install the game in that way on a Mac. However, you can download BlueStacks. For a Mac, it's going to be BlueStacks 4. They do not have BlueStacks 5 or 10 ready yet for a Mac, but your step-by-step -step guide for the Mac is much easier 
much simpler than it is on Windows. You can just go straight to downloading BlueStacks 4. You don't have to worry about any of the virtualization stuff. It will actually download a DMG file on your Mac. You double click that to install. Then you're gonna see a screen like this. You double click that to install. You'll have to confirm here saying, yes, I'm sure I want to open it. Then you hit install now and you will have to verify that with your administrator password. And then here's maybe the most important step. You're not done there because after entering that information, you're gonna get this system extension blocked pop-up. All you have to do is open up your security and privacy. As you can see, they show you here. Then you need to make sure that you allow this. And depending on which version of Mac you're running, you're probably gonna have to restart and reboot your Mac right here. It says if you're on Mac OS 10.15, Catalina or below, you can actually skip ahead to step 12. But Big Sur or newer, and you're probably gonna need to restart. Now, if you try to restart and it says, hey, Bluestacks interrupted your restart, just hit cancel right here. Go back into that same security and privacy menu and just hit restart again. And from there, you're good to go. You're ready to launch BlueStacks on the Mac, install the app there. Now, I'm gonna be sure to link all of these help articles in the video description below. BlueStacks actually has a great support page, a great YouTube page as well, with a lot of these tutorial videos that walk you through step-by-step -step if you're stuck at a certain process. Now, if you guys are actually curious about my thoughts on the game itself, then I already have a video uploaded about that here on the channel. Check it out. I'll let you know exactly what I think, my honest impressions. I'll link it here on the right side of the screen now. As always, thank you all so much for watching. I'll talk to you again soon.